There is a man they call the human polar bear. They also call him an oddity. No one really knows why he swims. Perhaps to be alone. Or maybe to prepare for the day that the sun melts the world. What does he know that others don't? Are there others that see the future as he sees it? And want to help him change it? Maybe he is an oddity. But I'm sure he doesn't mind what you call him. As long as it's not ordinary. Because ordinary won't change the world. Lewis, um, welcome to the Eastern Cape. Thank you. Uh, I'm sure it's good to be back. I know that you've spent a little bit of time here, but you were telling me a little bit earlier about how you've seen the changes in this province in South Africa. It's changed dramatically because I left here in 1985. I just can't believe the changes. You know, you just drive. We used to go to school in Grahamstown, and you drive on that road now, and it used to just be barren farm farmland, and now it's game parks everywhere. So you, you've noticed quite a substantial uh, change in the, in the area in terms of, of, of the rewilding that's taken place here. <laughs> I think rewilding is very, very important here. We've got to turn the clocks back to 1820. It's really as simple as that. You know, when my ancestors came here, there would have been elephants, lions, leopards, buffalo, all these animals. And by the 1930s, they were all gone. And uh, it's, it was nothing short of a disgrace that it was allowed to happen. And now, with a new democratic South Africa, and with people with vision like your, like your father, you know, we're turning the clock back. It's going to take some turning, but it's, it's an incredible thing, and it's right to do. And uh, Lewis, you're, you're, this is your first stay at a, at a Mantis property, the Shamwari townhouse in Port Elizabeth. Um, what are your thoughts on this property, and, and will you try further Mantis properties out after this experience? I, I must say, it, <laughs> it's slightly different to my one-room hut in the Arctic. Let me just put it like that. It's, it's gorgeous. It, it, it really is. And, uh, you know, it's just one minute down there, we've got the Algoa Bay or Nelson Mandela Bay, as it's now called. Tomorrow morning, we're going to go for a little swim out there. It's, it's heaven. Lewis, um, have your campaigns been effective? Well, you know, I am, one, I am just one person, but I, I'm hoping that we are being effective. I remember two years ago when I did the swim at the North Pole, the majority of the ice which I saw at the North Pole uh, two years ago was around about three meters thick. And then 14 months later, I tried to kayak all the way to the North Pole, and I was so shocked by what I saw that I got on the telephone to uh, Gordon Brown. And I had this incredible conversation with him where I said, Prime Minister, I was here 14 months ago, the ice was three meters thick. I'm now here and I've been kayaking through the Arctic ice packs and it is now one meter thick. So over, pay, uh, over a space of just 14 months, it's gone from three meters thick to one meter thick. And you know, very, very shortly afterwards, he appointed the first climate change minister in Britain. And then he enacted that, uh, that the bill which went through parliament, uh, cutting Britain's uh, carbon emissions by 80% by 2050. Now, I wasn't the only person calling for it, but. I just think that some of these symbolic things, like swimming across a place where there used to be ice and now it's just water, or kayaking through places which used to be frozen over, they, they strike a chord with some of these world leaders that perhaps science isn't able to, to get through.